Right, first of all, I've not been very well this week. I've had a particularly severe Yorkshire strain of man flu. And to be honest, I've not put the care, the thought and the planning into this video that I normally do and it may show. So my profound apologies for that. I will do better and service will resume as normal next week. Now, oxidization on the cooling fins of bike engines. I think I must get more questions about this and how to sort it than any other subject relating to bikes. Now, all cylinder heads tend to be powder coated these days, but as a aesthetic design feature, what manufacturers tend to do is they grind the paint off the edge of the fins. And I think just about all manufacturers do this with one model or another and I think it looks great but they don't and in actual fact they can't really put anything on the end of those fins to protect them from the elements now as you know aluminium doesn't rust as such but it does oxidize and if you've not been following a regime of protecting your engine with some sort of maintenance spray whether it be double TT or GT85 this will be the inevitable result on most bikes now my T120 the fins are pristine because I do look after them but the T100 unfortunately although it's spent most of its life in a garage in a dry-ish environment the telltale signs of oxidization on those fins is well and truly showing itself now this isn't the worst that I've ever seen but if it's left unattended and you don't do anything about it, the inevitable result of this will be that it will get underneath the powder coating on the side of those fins and it will start to lift it all up. It'll start flaking off in big chunks in due course. And on really, really bad examples, I've even seen the fins erode with notable portions of them simply disintegrating and falling away. So you do need to keep on top of it. Now, if your fins look like this or perhaps a bit wet, it's not the end of the world. It is very easy to sort out. Now, I have my own tried and trusted method for dealing with this kind of thing, but just out of curiosity, I thought I would have a look here on YouTube and just see what other people are suggesting. And to be quite honest, I was horrified. Now, the common theme seems to be the use of some sort of electrical equipment, uh, some sort of grinder, a Dremel, one of these multi-tools, a drill with a sanding attachment on it. Seriously, don't do it. My personal view is that if you can't sort this out by hand with the method that I'm going to describe to you, then you should either put up with it or think about changing your cylinder head. High-speed electrical grinders and sanders are just too aggressive for doing a job like this. You can't feel what the actual machine is doing and by the time you realise you've dug into it or you've taken too much off, it's too late. Do it by hand so that you can feel the progress. Don't forget, especially with air-cooled machines, the manufacturers work out very carefully the amount of surface area that is needed on these fins to adequately cool your engine. So if you remove too much, you may leave your engine in a position where it's not able to cool itself properly. And in extreme cases, if you take too much off, it could lead to an engine seizure. All you're going to need is a bowl of warm water, some wet and dry abrasive paper, and a small flat block of wood. Not cork, not rubber, They're too flexible. It must have a hard, stiff surface. Now the grade of abrasive paper that you use will depend on the severity of the damage that you're trying to correct. In my case, all I actually had in stock in my workshop is 1200 grit wet and dry, which is extremely fine. Now this wasn't ideal, I would have preferred something like an 800 grit or possibly even a 600 grit. But I knew that a 1200 grit would do it, it just might take a little bit longer. You don't want to be using any coarser than a 600 grit. The scratches will be too identifiable when you finish the job. And I would certainly suggest that you finish this job off with something like an 800 or a 1000 grit paper. At the end of the day, it does depend on the standard of finish that the manufacturers produce because what you're really aiming to do is to remove the damage and mimic the original manufacturer's finish. 
Now in the case of the T100 it is quite fine, it's almost a polished surface so I decided to go ahead with the 1200 grit. Leave your wet and dry to soak for a good 10 or 15 minutes prior to using it. Don't just spray a bit of water onto your cylinder head and then use the paper dry, it won't be as effective. While that's soaking, wipe the fins down with some sort of degreasant or cleaner just to remove any oil that you may have put in there in the past. Obviously this will work as a lubricant and it will stop the paper from cutting. I just used some Silkeline chain and brake cleaner. The reason I use that rather than anything else is because it evaporates, um, you don't have to rinse it off with water. Now once that's all done and your paper's well soaked, wrap the paper around your piece of wood and get to work on the end of those fins. You don't need to put a tremendous amount of pressure on it, but you do need to be firm and just work the paper on the block backwards and forwards along the edges of the fins. Now be very careful here not to slip or get too carried away and start rubbing it into areas that you don't want scratching. And by that I mean things like oil lines, your exhaust headers, and you definitely don't want to get it in between the fins. Now just keep at it and periodically dry it off with a piece of cloth or a workshop wipe just to check how your progress is coming along. You don't want to be removing any more metal than you absolutely have to. Now I know a lot of people are going to think this is too much effort and there must be a quicker way of doing it with some sort of machine but seriously it's just not worth it. I actually timed the left hand side of this cylinder head and from start to finish it took me 19 minutes and 2 seconds. Now one thing I did notice about this cylinder head is that the edges had not been ground down very accurately and there were sort of dips along those fins so a flat block wasn't going to into them properly. So once I got to a certain stage where I realised I couldn't go any further until I dealt with these areas, I simply folded the paper up several times so that it was reasonably stiff and then concentrated on those areas just using my fingers and the paper on its own. Just reasonably light strokes with the flat of your fingers. Be careful not to dig in in between the fins. Now stop regularly, wipe it off and check your work to check your progress. And if the paper starts to feel like it's not cutting anymore, refold it so that you provide yourself with a fresh piece that hasn't been used. Now one advantage of doing it this way with your fingers is that you can literally feel the areas of damage underneath through the paper. And if you do it properly, by the end of it you should end up with something looking like this. Now I can be a little bit OCD, like I said it took me under 20 minutes to do this. There are one or two areas that I think need a little bit more attention, but this is 99.5% better than it was when I started. There's no doubt about it, a coarser grit paper would have made this job much easier for me. And as I've said, between a 600 and 800 grit should provide you with the ideal cutting power for a restoration job like this. Now prevention is better than a cure and I know that if a maintenance spray had been used on this bike from day one I would never have had any damage here that I needed to remove. I can't stress enough that something like Double TT or GT85 used on a regular basis as part of your normal cleaning regime will go a long, long way to preserving the aesthetic appeal of your bike and preserving its residual value for you know that time when you might come to want to sell it. That's it for this week. I hope that you found this video useful and that you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm back on Wednesday with the Payday Project Part 5. And if everything goes according to plan, we should be fitting some new rear shock absorbers to the bike, along with one or two motone bits. So make sure you don't miss it. Until then, ride carefully, and I'll see you soon.